What's going on, E39 Source? This is Nate from beautiful Southern California. Um, I'm currently up in the mountains. This is the Glendora Mountain Road. You can see it starts up in the back over there, runs down the corner, and goes around this mountain here. It's a blast to drive. I'm very lucky that I live somewhat near it. It's about a 15, 20 minute drive from my house, so I can't really complain. Anyways, we're not here to talk about the road, we're here to talk about this car. Now, this is my 2003 BMW E39 530i. Uh, this is the automatic equipped model. It's also a sport package model, as you can see by the blacked out door trim. And it's got BMW's 5-speed auto tragic slush box. Um, that's not really great, and it has a few issues at the moment. But, let's run through some of the features of this car, what I think about it, how I got it, all that sort of stuff, and what I use it for. So first things first, let's go around the outside of the car and take a look at uh, what's going on on the outside. So obviously this is a 2003, so this is a facelifted E39, um, therefore it has the Hella angel eyes in both headlights, and I have installed uh, pre-facelift blackout grills, I still have the original grills in the garage, um, but I just think the blackout look grills look really nice. The paint is BMW's black sapphire metallic, uh, I forget the exact paint code, it's on like 475 or something, um, you can see obviously I'm from California, we are required to have a front plate here which is really annoying. Uh, you can see two fog lights up front in the grills and the non-M -sp non sport bumper, just a standard bumper for the car. Now, as you've probably already noticed, these headlights are slightly hazed. They are original, well this one is at least, original to the car. Um, this one being a Hella headlight, you can see the Hella logo right about there. I don't know if you can read it or not. And the standard orange corner. Being 2003 E39 headlights, these are not openable. You can't bake these things open in the oven either with a hair dryer or using sticking them in the oven for a few minutes. Um, so you have to kind of slice through the plastic at the top to replace the adjusters, which makes it kind of a pain. It takes like three hours to do it, and it's a mess, and it's kind of ugly and all that. The nighttime illumination is actually kind of poor. I would like to get a newer set of headlights. That Preferably a set of OE Hella headlights, but $1,200 is quite a bit of cash to throw down for that. Um, there are options on the market, things like the uh, Umnitsa FXR re retrofitted lenses. Those look really nice, but they're also expensive. It's like $1,000 for a set for one that's fully optioned out for what would be right for this car. And they don't look quite as nice as the OE Hella ones, and they're probably produced in China, so I'm going to save the cash for the OE Hella ones, even if the light is better on the new ones. Moving around to the side of the car, here you really get a picture of how dirty that headlight lens is. It's not great, but you can see the uh, factory-equipped BMW Style 71 wheels, um, which I was very impressed with. I actually didn't know that they made these wheels for the E39, but different from the E46, this has a much larger dish. That distance here is much greater, and I just really like the way these things look. They're two-piece wheels, uh, I believe made by some Italian company for BMW. Um, I currently have them wrapped in a set of Sumitomo HDR Z3 tires, which I really like. They're kind of an aggressive tire. They're summer tires. I live in California. I never see anything but sun or rain. So they're really great for what I do. They're terrible in the snow. I did have the opportunity to drive these very briefly in mild snow conditions. No traction whatsoever. So you don't really want to hit the mountains with these. But I've also put BMW valve stem caps on these things just because I like the way they look with the with the rim and the, with the studded uh, two-piece wheel. Um, I am planning on replacing the BMW caps in the center with a more modern one because these ones are just kind of old. You can see that the plastic is all gray and they spin really easy and they're just garbage. I would like to refinish all four wheels at some point. Um, I do like the style 71s. These are 17 inch tires, I should point out. They are 235, 45 R17s, if you're interested in the size. Sport, standard sport package tires, nothing that crazy. Moving right along, uh, you can look down the side, and one of my favorite aspects of the E39 shows up in this shot really well. You can see just the arch of the fender right there looks great. I love the way these things flare out. Um, it's something unique to the E39 that I really don't think they conveyed well uh, with the F10 or the uh, E60. They're just a little bit too flashy and flamboyant, but I think these subtle fender flares that BMW did in the late 90s, early 2000s look great. One of my favorite features of the car. Moving around to the back of the car, we see the OE Hella taillights. Um, I have had a few issues with these, primarily in the trunk, in this corner over here, where the uh, connection meets the back of the headlight. Now, because it sits above a battery, and the battery is obviously corrosive in its acids and things, the headlight connection was really badly corroded, so I had to actually take that out, clean up all the individual connections and fix that up. Now I do have one spot of rust in the car, and it's a fairly typical one for E39s. It's right here at the center of the door latch. 
really not obvious unless you're like right on top of it. You can kind of see it if I can get the iPhone to focus. But either way, it's just kind of annoying. I've sanded it down a little bit to take off some of the bite and put some WD-40 in there to help keep it from spreading. At some point, this entire rear panel here will need to be refinished to remove that. Not too worried about it at the moment because it's not really going that bad, but it is a typical rust spot. Now, this is the only rust spot I've been able to find on this entire car. This car lived in uh, Arizona, Texas, and California for its entire life. I'm not the first owner, obviously. And so you do have to take care of it, but this is the only rust I found, which I've been very pleased with. This passenger side door is really where I'm most disappointed with on this car. Um, if you get up close to it, you can see the light swirling in different places. I believe this car was a family car before, um, and this right side door has swung into a lot of things over the years. There's just dings and dents everywhere, especially in this one section right here that I'll need to get refinished at some point. And it's probably just going to be too weird to replace the entire door because it's so bad. Or actually get it repainted and sanded down and whatnot like that. Um, a little bit disappointed there, but not too big a deal. And it's still the OE factory finish, so I'm not going to complain there. Um, the gas cap. Now, E39 owners are infamous for complaining about gas cap rust. And look, there is none. No rust whatsoever here. Because, again, this is a California car, a Texas car, and an Arizona car where it doesn't rain much, and when it rains, it dries out pretty quickly. And I believe this car was kept in a garage based upon the conditions of the seals and things like that, so can't really complain there. Although this gasket here is a little bit cracked and worn with age. Not a big deal. Standard door mirrors. No mirror bubbling, which I'm very happy about. Um, the clear side indicators. And this door trim will need to be, the shadow line door trim will need to be refinished at some point. I'm planning just to hit it with a coat of Plasti Dip and see how that looks and we'll find out how that holds up as well. Uh, but we'll see how that turns out. As far as exterior appearance goes, if you take 10 on the scale and give that to Ryan's car, and a 1 give it to an E39 with peeling paint and dented doors and whatever like that, this is probably a 6-ish. Um, I say that because this car was involved in a pretty serious accident under my responsibility. Got going too fast on a canyon, hit the dirt, and spun it into a guardrail on the left side of the vehicle. Um, that said, the front bumper, the hood, the driver's side headlight, driver's side fender, driver's door, passenger door, rear quarter panel, rocker panel, and the rear bumper all had to be refinished in some extent. So the hood is off of a 98 uh, 528i. That actually was matte black when I bought it, so I had the body shop refinish that. The front bumper came from JC Whitney. I'm very happy with the fit on that, so if any of you need a replacement standard bumper, hit up JC Whitney. They got good stuff. Um, the driver's side fender came from Colorado from a salvage vehicle. Driver's side door came from a local shop who didn't want to ship it anywhere, so I got it pretty inexpensively, $100, I think. Uh, the entire rocker panel was refinished, which I'm very impressed by. It's a little dirty right now, as you can see. The car hasn't been washed in a while. But the rocker panel was completely refinished, and the rear passenger door was, was not bad, damaged badly enough to be redone, so it was refinished as well. Uh, rear quarter panel refinished and back bumper refinished. This as a 530i has the M54B30 straight 6 and the standard assortment of 59 problems. Um, the power steering fluid reservoir leaks quite badly. You can see the runs going down right there on the on the hoses. Um, I blew an upper radiator hose, which was exciting to say the least, uh, and therefore there are dots of antifreeze splattered all over the place, including on the lining for the hood, uh, which actually works quite well, actually. I've, I took that out to try to clean it, and it didn't really work all that well, so I'm just going to leave it and forget it. So I've had to replace the upper and lower, which you probably can't see, uh, radiator hoses as well as the thermostat because it was sticking. Figured it was time to do it anyways at 104,000 miles, just about. Cabin air filters like usual, nothing unique there. Engine air filter, diesel valve needs to be replaced. I'm probably going to work on the gas auto, uh, GAS, German Auto Solutions uh, kit, which I'll put up a DIY if I figure that out eventually. Um, Bosch ABS module, no trifecta yet. Crossing my fingers that that stays away. Uh, replace the fan clutch just to keep that safe and the fan blades with a, uh, I think it was bare, therm or bare uh, clutch. I'm not quite sure what the fan blades were. I think it was just genuine BMW. Um, you can see the Xenon headlights. Now, this this being a new headlight to the vehicle actually came out of a 2002 525i. So this one I could bake open. 
This one, on the other hand, I could not. And you can see that right here where I used some gaffer tape and some uh, sealing compound underneath that to keep it shut uh, against the adjusters baking up. But I can now adjust the height and uh, direction of my headlights, which is totally worth the cutting that you have to do. So I can actually see at night now, which is great. Uh, the Vanos unit probably needs to be rebuilt or at least taken out and serviced at 104,000 miles. It is kind of clunky. It doesn't make the rattle yet, but I can tell that it's not quite doing what it should be. Um, I did an oil change uh, 3,000, 2,000 miles ago. Yeah, 2,000 miles ago with Mobile One 10 W40 high, uh, high mileage motor oil, full synthetic. It's great stuff. Um, it's actually quieted down quite a lot of the startup rattle that you hear with these cars, and it's you know stopped a few leaks here at the bottom at, at the oil pan gasket. So I'd recommend that stuff for anyone who's experiencing some minor oil leaks, just a little bit of dribble. I've also made the move to the standard LED angel eyes, just because those give it a more updated look. Had to replace the hood sensor like everybody else in the U39 because it was causing my alarm to go off in the middle of the night and waking up the neighbors because I do park this car outside. Um, you can see how just how long the inline six engine is. It goes all the way to the back of the engine bay. So there's really not much room for this engine in the car. Um, it's very impressive they managed to pack it in here, but that's probably what gives the E39 kind of a classic look to it, kind of a more sporty look, and also probably gives it its rather cramped back seat. This is the variable intake runner. Um, you can see the DISA valve here, which is disconnected at the moment because it doesn't work. Um, so it just rattles around. Moving along to the interior of the car, you can see the really only signs of the impact that I had on the front left corner. Um, the airbag no longer sits quite as flush as it should with the sports thing. Well, there's a bit of a gap here that I can stick my finger into. Not a big deal. It does make the horn a bit harder to depress as it does kind of flop around a bit. I could probably fix that with uh, a new steering wheel, but I'm not that concerned with it. There's a slight crack here. It still works perfectly, so airbag is still the play as usual. The second sign of the impact is right here, and this is uh, a paint thing. This is the body shop's fault, actually. There is a definite gray line that runs down the entire rocker panel here where it was refinished. Um, and I can't get that to come out with anything. You know, I've tried polishing combat, I've tried clay, waxes, nothing tends to remove it. So I think it's just baked underneath the clear coat at this point. Not going to worry about it too much. It is kind of annoying. I'll have that redone when I do repaint the rest of the car, which I'd like to do at some point, but I don't have the cash for that at the moment. Good paint job, six, seven thousand dollars That's a lot of cash. It does run all the way along the, the sill, as I said, and a slight bit up into the quarter panel. Again, only someone who owns the car is going to notice it. Not really that big a deal. You can see that my car is a March of 2003 car, one of the last E39s made. It was made on March 11th, according to uh, that Russian BMW site that decodes the VINs. Very comfortable sports seats, aggressive bolstering, a little bit collapsed, especially in this side bolster here. I'm not sure what that's quite about. But, and you can see it's cracking a little bit. I have conditioned it with uh, Meguiar's gold class leather conditioner, so it is pretty supple, very nice to grab onto. If you guys have recommendations, Leather Reek I've heard is actually pretty good uh, at restoring the softness, especially of the back seat. Back seat's kind of hard. Uh, but if you've got recommendations for stuff that restores the condition of this leather, let me know. And maybe a dive would help as well. Sitting inside the car, you can see the chrome or actually uh, silver gauge rings are not chrome, they're not reflective at all because I didn't really want that look because I prefer a more muted aluminum look like an Apple laptop. Um, you can see I've got almost 104,000 miles here uh, last trip and it's about 68 degrees outside. Can't ask for better weather than that. Automatic headlamps, which are very nice. Automatic windshield wipers, which are absolutely essential for California rain. Because California rain is patchy, and so you're driving in and out of the rain all the time, and it's kind of annoying to constantly fiddle with the switch. So just leave it at that second setting, click it up one, and you got automatic windshield wipers, and it automatically detects that based upon a sensor in the rear view mirror, um, which is attached to the windshield, which uses the reflection of light uh, in the glass to figure that out. Apparently, when the water hits the sensor, the light that is emitted by the sensor travels out, rather than reflecting back into the other end of the sensor and therefore it knows how to trigger the windshield wipers. Auto dimming rear view mirror, standard in all these cars. You can see my parking permit and you can probably figure out where I go to school if you read that carefully. Sunroof, uh, you can see the garage door opener as well. Only have that one programmed for my garage. This one doesn't do anything, but because I only have one garage to get, in, to get into. 
I have, do have one common problem, and that is that the vinyl of the sun visor is cracking quite badly. You can see it in these corners. And also, the mechanism that turns the light on, I'm going to slide the uh, cover back and forth, does not work, so the lights don't turn on. They do turn on, though, when you just pull the thing open, which tells me that something in this mirror is bad. Um, and so I just removed the bulbs because when I'm driving in the daytime or uh, in the dusk room dawn, I really don't need this light on when I'm being blinded by the sun. So it's not, not ideal, but just pulled the bulbs out of this assembly here. Problem solved. And it, doesn't tur and it turns off the moment you close it, so it's not draining the battery at all, which is nice. I do hate these stickers, though. Anyone has any idea how to get these things off? Let me know. So that's basically it. Um, I'm very happy with this car. Backseat's a little bit smaller than I would have liked, and it's a little bit less reliable than I was told, or than I was led to believe beginning in. I did know it was going to be expensive as an old German car. Didn't know it was going to be quite so expensive, but you get used to that. Um, I'm going to plan on doing a tint soon, and probably a lot of DIYs coming up in the future as I work on this car a lot this summer. So we'll see how that go those goes. Look for those on the channel. Um, I'm interested in seeing how the stainless brake lines do. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Uh, leave a comment below and give a like and subscribe to this channel because it's awesome. Ryan does a great job of putting everything together. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.